I consent. Okay. Is this thing on? I had to consent oh, to be in recording Fuck, again. Dude. Oh, here we go. All right. Yeah. Welcome back. Episode fake 23. sneeze. Fake sneeze. Fake sneeze. Episode 23. Suplex Biddies. Brought to you by Couch Guy Sports. The GOAT episode. <laughs> Michael Jordan, baby. It's my GOAT. Michael Jordan. Speaking of the, speaking of the GOAT, it's Kobe Bryant Day. Also that. Happy birthday to him. Uh, it's tomorrow, actually. 8-24. We're recording. Uh, we're recording Monday, twenty oh. third. Oh, it's eight twenty four. That's right. Never What's mind. today? It's oh, not ju- the twenty third. It's not 23rd. December yet. Nope. Oh. Okay. All right. Let's try this again. Reboot. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. I'm gonna come <laughs> back in. <laughs> Suplex Spitties, episode twenty three. Brought Michael to you by Jordan, Couch Guys. Maybe. All right. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Sorry, carry brought, on. Brought to you by Couch Guys Sports. Use the internet one time. Make sure you're checking out all the pods. Make sure you're checking out all the blogs. Sure you're checking out us on Twitch, doing big thing. We're on Twitch at least five nights a week nowadays. Twitch.tv slash Couch Guy Sports. Make sure you five check time, that out. Five times, five times. Booker T. There was only four, but yeah, okay. And just <clears throat> enjoy that product. Just yeah, enjoy it already. We're all about enjoying the product here. Also, don't forget Suplex Biddies. Don't forget Suplex Biddies is sponsored by Axel Gun. <clears throat> Need a massage and moments notice? Go get yourself an Exo Gun. Trust me when I tell you the best at percussion therapy. One eight hundred Exo Gun. Just kidding. Don't call. It's not a number. ExoGun.com. <laughs> Use code CGS ten for ten percent off at checkout. That's CGS ten at checkout for ten percent off. ExoGun.com. Go check out the link in the description, <clears throat> fellas. Usual crew was here tonight. We got. Was there, was there like some shows this weekend or something? Like did some stuff happen. Why are you a dickhead? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> we got our man on his deathbed today. Diego Galvez is here. Diego, Diego Pedia like Galvez. Let's go. We're not a sponsor, but we'll be a major plug. <laughs> Listen, Pedia like, you want to sponsor this product? Absolutely. 1,000%. <laughs> you save me all the time. Yeah, and that voice, you heard it several times already in this episode. That's our wrestling aficionado, Andrew Hunnaman. Myself, obviously, Chris Jones, you know my stupid voice. Here we are. 23 episodes really? in, fellas. We had a fantastic week of wrestling. So oh, first yeah. of all, first oh, of all, first shit. of all, first of all, we started off Friday night. Uh, He's fucking back, boys. Uh, uh, I was going to do. For, for, those, for those who can't see Hunnaman's motions because you're listening to us on Anchor or, or Spotify, he's clearly doing the CM Punk talk. I was gonna play cult of personality when we started it, but you know it's fine. I had a nice moment with a with a cat with another fan when I was in Boston on Friday night. I was in line for my John Mulaney comedy show, and uh, some dude was going down the street blasting cult of personality. So I looked over at him. We did the nudge, and then he looked at me, and I started going like this, and he freaked out and was just like, "Yeah, let's fucking go!" And he jammed it, and he kept going. So you know, wrestling fans, we're a rare breed. I hope that guy's doing well. So. Real question. Yeah. Where do you rank that in your loudest pops of all time? Top three. Top, Top five. Top five. Top five. Yeah. I just think it was perfect, though. though. They just they didn't make anybody wait. The anticipation was there. They were chanting it the second the Rampage song stopped, and they went right into it, and they gave it the time it needed. Literally, the segment was like 22, 25 minutes. And they still had matches to get to, but that yeah. was the biggest part of the night. Arguably will, biggest part of the weekend, depending on who you ask. But I will say for that, for for the AW organization, like, yeah, of course, that's that's easily the number one loudest pop you're gonna get in the mm-hmm. in the past however long and probably in the in the future for now. Yeah. Um, but I think overall wrestling wise, probably top five. I think there's there there are a few pops that um, I mean, we we heard of a few pops this weekend, uh, but I think that I think might top that a little bit. Uh, <laughs> it was up there. It was up there. It was. Me, what, a, what a weekend of returns, huh? For me, for me, for me. Listen, for me personally, Please. we're going pops. We're going Stone Cold when he helps mankind. Yep. CM Ooh. Punk coming back to AEW. Dolph Ziggler cashing the money in the bank, and then CM Punk and money in the bank. And CM Punk and Money in the Bank, and <laughs> yeah. Daniel Bryan winning the title at WrestleMania yeah. 30. Yeah, top five. So we're gonna we're gonna forget the John Cena return. That was a good one too. I. Mm, it was a big ovation because it was 
it was a huge pop and it was, it was one it was the one option that finally got like wwe fans to like somewhat buy into the product the um, main the mainstream attention that got to was definitely close to what punks was and i think that i think the the view rating just for john cena's pop was way up there mm-hmm. so john cena was a big impact definitely on smackdown ratings as um he was barely on last week and they dropped i think like six percent i think was the total yep Some, something like that um which is really not bad especially no, when they still, still when you mean it when your main inventor is really not available six yep. percent down that's there's that means that the, of thousands of people it's just that means Smackdown, that the attention is still Smackdown there. was still over two mil uh rampage was over a mil because it's CM punk obviously <laughs> um rampage talk about someone that moves the needle even though they said he didn't quite do that it went from what was it like a 740, 760 to a 1.11 1. 1, 1 or something like that. It was, like the, highest, something. It was, it was the highest an AEW show has had since their debut episode right. of Dynamite. Yep. So, so nice. I mean, I you kind of you kind of have to figure that out anyways, because CM Punk has been one of the most rumored names to come back to wrestling for for what for the past three years at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean it, it was bound to happen. WWE fans were always cheering CM Punk, CM Punk before even seeing a return. Mm-hmm. Um, AW obviously cheering it on. So you kind of expected that pop to happen. Yep. So to, to me, the whole CM Punk with WWE thing was always funny because do you guys remember when um, they were based? It was basically like the preview right before Daniel Bryan was in the WrestleMania. And they're like, we, <clears throat> you shouldn't quit like CM Punk did. But people forget CM Punk didn't quit. CM Punk got fired, low key. People forget yeah, that CM Punk was forced out. He walked out, took like a hiatus, thinking he'd be coming back, and then they fired him on his wedding day. Mm-hmm. So based on the story, he was forced out. So that's, that's but a he was. Out. They were the stories that they had planned for him was nothing he wanted to do. Well, and plus, it. don't don't forget in the, in the interview I heard again earlier today. Um, it was the WrestleMania where he was the time to take, and it was bet the <clears throat> the rating was better than Brock Triple H, and it was better than Cena Raw. Mm-hmm. And Vince was like, "Oh, we should have main event to that." And CM Punk was like, "Yeah, you think? You think?" <laughs> so <laughs> Punk didn't even want the match originally because he was just yeah. like, "I don't want to be another one of the streak." Wasn't he didn't want the heel the heel turn? Yeah, at first, yeah, but he wanted to face the Rock. Rock wanted to face the heel. And then yeah. it turned out the rock was him. He faced him. <laughs> but good for them. Huge signing. He's going to make his debut on Wednesday. So tune in, 8 o'clock on TNT. Uh, he's already just, scheduled to verse. Just Darby. on Dynamite. Just on Dynamite. We're going to see him live in Chicago yeah. I was at the Now Arena. Show him off. Wow. This must be like what it's like when I cut you off. Yeah? <laughs> That's what I said. It's like when I cut you off. Here we go. All right. I was acknowledging but it. AEW, solid overall. Dynamite was solid last week. Rampage was solid. I thought they did a good job. They have definitely, they're definitely starting to get a bunch of mouths to feed, especially with the report that Bray Wyatt's deal is basically as good as done. And if mm-hmm. that's the case, he debuts. His 90 day is done the day before uh, Halloween. Yep. So if that's the case, you know, you know where uh, the, the the week of Halloween or the I believe the day before Halloween actually. No, it's the week of Halloween. The week of Halloween, they're in Boston, so it's the, the oh, next week. The next week. Ah, okay. okay. So, so he miss it by that much. Test test. But let's move in to WWE's big weekend, SummerSlam Takeover. Speaking of Takeover, really quick sources within the WWE that are backstage of tonight's episode of Monday Night Raw have confirmed that Adam Cole is not at the show. It was noted that this does not confirm Cole leaving the company, but he is not in any plans for tonight's episode of Monday Night Raw. So does that mean he goes to Friday Night SmackDown? Do they wait a little bit? Who knows? Is he leaving the company? I don't know. I hope he leaves. He, he, oh, I just want to see him with his best friends again, you know? Get him back him on, on BT. See him on, see him on being the elite. Yeah, exactly. All right, that, so real quick, we'll talk about what happened last night at TakeOver because it's shorter. Oh, so, round of applause, Mr. Diego Galvis, as he's currently dying, 5-0, and called every match right on. Uh, myself, 4-1, and one, Hunnam, and 3-2. and two. 
Uh, Hunnaman, you got Dakota Kai wrong. Uh, pulling for you, but it didn't happen. Uh, and then you and I both were on the wrong side of the NXT UK title match, which was an absolute banger. Oof. That was my favorite match of the year. So brutal. So, so brutal. So highs and lows, real quick, Hanman. I mean, the lowest point in the night was unfortunately the title match uh, with Cross and Joe. It was still a good match. Two big dudes going at it. Uh, you can see Joe got winded pretty quickly, and he's definitely not quite back in that ring shape that we're very used to with uh, Samoa Joe there. But the highlight, obviously, Karrion Cross now likely headed right up to Raw. Maybe he'll finally get his first official feud. But that that Walter Dragunov match, man, like I, I'm going to watch that tonight when we wrap this up because I just want to see it again. It was incredible. It was uh, what would what would we say it was yesterday? 22, 23 minutes of pe- two dudes just beating the absolute shit out of each other. Twenty two so, minutes and like five seconds. So freaking good. I think. I mean, I think I'm very happy it happened. Dragunov definitely earned it. He paid his dues and just took quite a freaking beating. Like those chops, the fuck, the fucking shotgun drop kick that sent him thirty feet almost out of the ring and just so many highlights from that freaking match, the near falls, everything. And I don't think it was going to be tough. That was for me, that was the best part of the entire weekend. CM Punk return. Totally great. Best match of the weekend. Walter dragon. Um, I was, was kind of a little let down on the, the three, the two out of three falls between O'Reilly and Cole. Um, maybe it was because of the fact that, you know, I just saw Walter and dragon go at it for like 20 plus minutes. Mm-hmm. But I just feel like the intensity really wasn't there. Like, the first match, it was a quick fall for O'Reilly. Then the second match, you know, turns into a street fight, gets a little physical. Then before the steel cage, O'Reilly's already hurt. Cole locks him up, and then O'Reilly makes him submit because he gets a little little extra leverage from the rope. I mean. It was definitely an interesting finish. There was a lot, yeah. of, there was a lot of surprising tap outs. Walter Dragunov included that match. Edge Seth mm-hmm. Rollins later on. We'll talk about that. It was, inter- it was an interesting submission weekend. Um, they they kind of changed it up, which was nice. I think I think they really hit the first three matches right on the head. I think the other two, it could have been a little bit better. But mm-hmm. I think overall, out of ranking out ranking out of five, I would give it I'd give it a four out of five for a takeover. Really? Okay. Yeah, I think I think for me actually, the lowest point of the show was definitely the opening act. I think that Holland versus Baxter was just. May. Yeah, on the pre- on the pre-show, lack of lack of energy to get the crowd going and amped up for the yeah. show in itself. It was yeah, it's kind of dumb to have. A, they kind of just threw it together at the last. It didn't it, it didn't carry much weight for the show, but I think actually one of the highlights of of the night um, was definitely the fight between Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai. Yep. Um, they these two really beat the hell out of each other. <laughs> I was not expecting this much of a physical fight. Uh, obviously, Raquel. I mean, she's Super physical. Um, she got that back, bro. You know, there's no question about that. But I was not expecting the Kodakai to last this long either. I was expecting the Kodakai to, unfortunately, get, you know, dominated by Raquel because Raquel is just the bigger force between the two. Mm-hmm. Um, but Dakota held her weight. I just think, unfortunately, one mistake, that's all it takes. And Gonzalez was able to, you know, come, come the pinfall. Great finish for that match, too. Yep. Yeah, I I don't know why, but like when you said the one one mistake, just makes me think of one kiss. It's all it takes. Fall in love, man. <laughs> Possibility, man. We're about we to get copyrighted, aren't we? I can't wait. <laughs> as long as it's uh, under thirty well, listen, seconds, you're fine. Listen, copyrighted for that fucking voice. Oh, fucking push my ego through the moon <laughs> <laughs> to the. Boom! A very surprisingly good opening match for them as well. They have uh, good chemistry together. They really do. I mean, they've been oh, working hey, guys, together for me. there it is, Jones. It's me, hey, the Doc Boy. The streak me, is the back. Boy. It's me, the Doc Boy. Yeah. Woo-hoo. All right, let's focus. Let's focus. We're, I'm we're trying, completely I'm trying, off the rails. Well, this is what happens when you record on a Monday. All right. Summer Slam. A lot of things happen. Mm-hmm. Some good. Um, Sometimes very good. Sometimes got, very shit. We got some new champions. We got RK Bro, new tag team champions. We got Damian Priest, new United States champion. A lot of title changes. Uh, Charlotte Flair, new Raw Women's champion. <laughs> and um, 
Yeah, Becky Lynch is back. I'm still won mad. the won the SmackDown Women's Championship. I'm so, still so mad. we all know Sasha was unable to compete. More than likely, she got COVID. <clears throat> so their immediate replacement was Carmella. Carmella comes down the ring. Mr. X. We were like, hmm. It got they got booed so bad they had to turn off the crowd mics. They were the report was because they mm-hmm. were just booing Carmella so freaking loudly because it would have been like their seventh or eighth consecutive or their sex, sixth or seventh seventh seventh, seventh match since like, like June in like two months. This is just too yeah. many. Not but good. Definitely a misdirect. I mean, it then, it took the life away from that crowd immediately because the, the whole show before that. It was actually incredibly good. Yep. I was yep. like, I was glued. Even though I wasn't feeling good at all, I was fighting to keep my eyes open and continue mm-hmm. watching. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, bringing in Carmela on there, I get it. It's an audible and whatnot. That's not the audio that you want to listen to, no. unfortunately. Well, then the audio we got afterwards was Becky Lynch coming back. Nice little theme song come back. Yeah. That was, that was such a cool moment. And then they fucking did what they did. And I'm still mad about it. I've been mad about it for two days. That's not healthy. For, for those of you who didn't watch SummerSlam because, you know, not a fan of the product. Peacock sucks. Not a fan of the product. Not a fan of Peacock. Not a fan of whatever it is when it comes to wrestling. But Becky comes in, beats Bianca in under 30 seconds. And the place is looking like, what the fuck just happened? So let's talk. Let's talk highs and lows. Real quick, actually, real quick, real quick. Get the records out. I'm in five and three. Um, unfortunately, Nikki Ash didn't win. Mm-hmm. Neither did Tina, and neither did Bianca Belair. Uh, Diego and I both went three and five. Uh, both of us believed in the gender gender trend, the modern day Maharaja. That lasted uh, less than five minutes, and that it wasn't so even good. Um, that should have been on Raw tonight. Like I didn't. Uh, Diego and I both believed in. Diego and I both believed in uh, Rhea Ripley. Didn't happen. Both believe in John Cena. Didn't happen. Um, believed that someone not named Becky Lynch was going to win the SmackDown Women's title. Diego believed in the father-son tag team. And I believed in, you know, Seth Rollins not tapping out the edge. Hey, <clears throat> move on. Happens, you know. We, we digress, all right? Mm-hmm. All right, tossing that hey, so, over there. So I did, I did have Edge winning, right? Yes. I was the only one who didn't have Rollins. Didn't have, didn't have edge, you mean? I was the one who had rounds. Yes, I didn't okay, have edge. Yeah, yeah, okay, gotcha, gotcha. That's, yeah. that's the word, Tom. English, fun. <laughs> all right, Monday. highs highs and lows of the SummerSlam. Can we just all get, just talk about the low? I think we should just, everyone else is mad about it. Why, why can't all we right. get mad about Everybody it? Everybody else, on three, tell me the low. One, two, three. Alexa, bless and Eva Marie. <laughs> <laughs> McIntyre, McIntyre, also. Mall. Mine's still Bel Air, Becky. The the return was great, but the way they just they I've said it to you guys in our chats on separately, you know, and all that. On Twitter, I've argued with a bunch of people. You just Bel Air's been getting built up for eight months. You know, I argued on the internet about this. I was that I was that passionate. And uh they just fed her to a job and they had Becky Lynch beat her in a move. There was some people trying to rationalize it, saying it was one of those things where Lynch took advantage of her lack of uh action. I don't even know what was the word they used. It was like their lack of, uh, her lack Expert. of experience. Yeah. And she took the match without being prepared and then just got dropped and lost. And even the finisher itself, like, I just, it I just cool. don't, it was just a urinagi. Like she does that now. I didn't know that was her finisher. Uh, the, the match, you could have had a match. Like you didn't have to have Shinsuke come out with the, the guitar man and Pat Max. Rick Boogs, man. Fun. It was, Rick Boogs, man. it was fun. It was cool to see Come everybody on. cheering for him. But then, Rick like, Boogs. another match, like you said, Alexa even Marie, that didn't need to be on this freaking show. You couldn't have had Becky come in versus Bel Air for, like, 10, 15 minutes. And the report is they want her to be the top heel on SmackDown. Great. She's been great at it in the past. Make her cheat to win, like, 10 minutes into the match, 15 minutes into the match. Yeah. Have her use the ropes or use a steel chair or use a – title belt or whatever the hell it definitely i i definitely agree with hanuman there it definitely lacked that cerebral assassin kind of mindset there it, it was, to <sighs> to fuck her over from her title part of my yeah. french but i mean how, how are you going to tell me that bianca belair is just going to simply tap out to her urinagi knowing that we see her take worse hits and hasn't even topped out 
I she mean, felt like she felt like a foot off the ground. Not even. I, yeah. Even, even the camera, even though you go down to her feet and it looked like she jumped into maybe a little higher, it's just you could have had a match and it's been pissing me off. Even people all over the internet, even Nikki Bella on like the after party of SummerSlam was like, <laughs> they're like, hey, what was your favorite part? And she was like, well, let me tell you what my least favorite part was. Immediately, Becky burying, allegedly, or squashing hey. Bel Air. And it, when someone like that, she's a legend. She's been one of the most well-known women in the hit. She's one of the most well-known WWE figures in media still to this day. Yeah, She's got a TV show. She's dated John Cena and now she does other things and uh everyone else is just i'm still mad about it i, I could talk about this forever it's just what a list of accomplishments well not only <laughs> she does tv like... shows she dates dated john cena that one yeah, time. yeah. you know <laughs> not forget about what she did in the ring you know i just said that one of the most high profile i mean not, not, not only that but i mean let, let's be honest for a second real quick here bianca Belair has been in the best form that she's ever been throughout her whole career here yep. at wwe Yep. We've known that Becky Lynch has been working out for however long to make sure that she has a good return back to WWE. She looks good. She looked in great shape and whatnot. Her moves weren't all that quick, and her ring awareness was not fully there. Ring rust showed 100% in that. Um, it was all just nothing else but just crow hype, and that's really it. Yeah, if... For some odd reason, apparently there are reports that Sasha Banks, if she was going to be fighting, she would have won that match. I don't Where? know how believable those reports are. I looked so many are. places. I looked so many places for that report. Correct. I could not find I, it anywhere. I, I looked everywhere, too. I don't know how believable these reports are. I there, there, there are three gentlemen in social media that are extremely reliable when it comes to those reports, and all three of them deny that to be the case. Um we get it. Sasha Banks had COVID-19. Difficult to um, to come back and, and have a match within that short of time. Mm-hmm. Um, however, I think that if I had been WWE, I probably would have built this up uh, to been probably like a lumberjack match where everybody has an opportunity. Uh, Bianca Belair, including Becky Lynch, she comes in as a surprise guest out of nowhere, and that's where she makes her impact. Um, because at this point, like, yeah, Bianca has taken already a beating rather than just stare there at the most beautiful women in WWE roster um, and and just, you know, just take a urinagi and be knocked out in 26 seconds. Uh, it's, it's unfortunate because to see Bianca Belair, what's next for her? Like, she's turning heel or is she going to Raw? If she's going to Raw, that is a very smart move, considering that Raw definitely needs people that can boost up that show, and Bianca's excellent at that. She's got a great charisma to get with the crowd and, and build that program up. That That is something that I would love to see. Uh, but if she goes up to Raw, I hope her next challenge is Charlotte Flair, because I am sick and tired of Charlotte Flair winning titles as well. It's just, yeah. it's become more of a uh, monotony than, than, than anything else. It's like... Mm-hmm. Rhea, Rhea fought really good. So then Nikki Ash, and you're going to tell me that all of a sudden, no, oh, I'm Charlotte Flair, and I just, you know, I completely obliterated everybody else. It was it was such a given match. Um, She's getting forced like how Roman was back in the day, and that's why everybody turned on. It's too much of a push. I yeah. Don't get me wrong. I respect she's, Charlotte Flair as the she's wrestler. She's fantastic. She's one of the. She's arguably the best female performer of all time. We've talked about it before. It's just how many freaking short title reigns you have to keep giving her, like, yeah, I don't know. Why do you have to have Nikki Cash in right on that right now? Why couldn't you just run another feud or something? Mm-hmm. They their their booking of the the women's division has been questionable, like you were saying, and like even the Becky Lynch thing. Like they another report that I read, like all of us read it. They knew Sasha wasn't going to be competing like ten days out. So like this wasn't one of those last minute. Yeah, things. that was by Sports Kita. Sports yeah. Kita was so the like first they were one saying, to, to mention. It's not that. like day of. She wasn't cleared. It was literally they've no they knew about it for like 10 days. So they expedited Becky Lynch's return. They did the misdirect with Carmella and they didn't announce the match ahead of time because they wanted the pop to be bigger. Again, I can understand that mindset, but not the whole tossing your most well-rounded champion to the wolves for no freaking reason. I mean, at this point, too, if you knew Sasha couldn't compete, what if like couldn't have Becky have just come out and they could have had a stare down and they could have walked away? And had a match like next week or like at the next pay-per-view. Like, I feel like her coming back would have outshadowed Sasha not being there. 
Because obviously you get the booze, but then that comes out and you're like, oh shit. And then you just hold the title up, they glare at each other, and then you move on. Like you didn't have it's they there's so many better ways to do that. Not only that, but we've known that Becky Lynch was gonna come back at SummerSlam months ago. Months. Like was, if it wasn't WrestleMania, it was gonna be SummerSlam. Mm-hmm. End, of the summer, end of the summer, early fall. End of the summer, early fall is what we kept hearing over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm I'll stop talking about it. I'm I'm just gonna punch my pillow later, you know. Or Tony. <laughs> Wanna punch it? I could break my screen right now. I'm so mad. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. So real quick, um, they didn't need to have the match. The pop alone on Becky coming out would have been enough. Mm-hmm. The fact that they forced the match to happen, and not only for it to, that, the way that it happened, you build up Bianca Belair, Vince. Vince, I'm talking to you specifically because I know you're the. the fucking you watch this, and we know it. I've seen uh-huh. it. A hundred percent. I get the phone calls. I know. <clears throat> but this is a classic Vince McMahon. Hey, I'm going to build up this superstar. Oh, Becky is finally done being a mom for right now. Oh, hey, look, Bianca Belair, it's you. Fuck you. You're gone. Done. Just fucking ruin. That's what he does. Yeah. He just tosses it aside. He tosses it aside. The it's Toy ridiculous. Story meme with Andy yes. dropping Woody. I don't want to uh-huh. play with you anymore. hundred percent. It's Vince McMahon <laughs> with anybody that he builds up. When five when five names are, are available, it's Brock Lesnar, it's John Cena, it's Charlotte Flair, it's Becky Lynch, and it's Roman fucking Reigns, and they, he'll do it every time. And then The yep. Rock, but we haven't seen him in quite some not time. Not yet, not yet, yeah. But it's it's just fucking frustrating. Excuse my language, because I keep saying it. I'm getting mad now I'm talking about this. There's so many different avenues. Like, they both have said that they could have went for this, and they chose probably the absolute worst. Yep. Listen, I understand that not having a, a, a one woman's title match it would have potentially hit a little harder. But don't get me wrong, both of their women's title matches were atrocious. The triple threat, not good. Whatever you want to call the squashing of Bianca Belair, who you've built up because since she's come up to the main roster, you, you've been building it since the since you won the Rumble. Yep. How are you just going to throw it to the side over a 30 second Becky Lynch pop? It's ridiculous yep. to me. Good pop. Tr- Good pop. Cool ridiculous moment. to me. Probably the counter punk. And let's let's also agree. let's also add in there the level of disrespect for the previous <laughs> SB winner as well. That is yep. a huge moment there that mm-hmm. not a lot of things have gone for WWE in itself. And that is that is a legacy making. Can I can I they legitimately had a mainstream african-american female champion that they were sending on all the media circuits all the interviews all the everything she was at the freaking roaring crowd whatever music festival like i'm all loud baby get it right out so it's like why are you just sacrificing that for this particular moment and people were saying let it play out and becky's gonna be the heel and then they're saying bel-air was better when she was chasing the title and it's like i just disagree with all of that like so why is she me- better at chasing it she was a great let- champion let me retort to Hunnam's comment on Becky was the counter to Punk. Oh, yeah. Brock was the counter to Punk. <laughs> I agree with that. Yeah. yeah I, I agree with that. Becky was just an additional, hey, I, just think I got two coming back. <laughs> is That's, it, Vince. Is it... That's Vince in his fucking geriatric mind. I mean, I, I, think I, I can agree a with that. star than Brock. Is that just but me? listen, did you not hear the pop when Ponytail Brock Lesnar, who – has been the slimmest I've seen him since 2004 came out. Dude, after seeing the pictures that came out, like I, when it was happening, I don't know if it was just our stream was a little blurry, but he was, it was like, wow, is he like, is he all right? And then you get the close ups and the clear ass, like 4D or 4D, mm-hmm. 4K images. Dude, shredded as always. And he looks, he has a cool new look and he's going to be a good guy. So it seems. Paul Listen. Heyman on a Paul match, book it. Listen, the rights, the rights to Paul Heyman doing promos. <laughs> <laughs> but no. So, High, hot the high of the pay per view for me it was Ed, it was Edge and Seth Rollins. Yep. Yeah. No question. Yeah. No question. You can make the argument for Roman and Cena just by the way it was, mm-hmm. but there were points in times where Roman was just being. Excuse me. I thought I was going to throw up or burp. I couldn't tell. Oh, yeah. You okay. Buddy? Um. You okay. Yeah. Pity light. Pity light, man. <laughs> I, I, I probably need my water that I tossed like a Vince McMahon. But 
I think with Roman and Cena, that you can make the argument, but at the same time, you knew Roman was going to win just based off the dumb um, thing they had if Roman lost, he would have left WWE. With, yeah, Edge and Seth, with Edge and Seth, you didn't know what you were going to get. Mm-hmm. And we got Brood Edge into awesome. the Rated R Superstar, which was probably Such... one of my favorite entrances ever. Yep. That was Same. the most epic entrance I've seen in the past 10 years for yep. any pay-per-view. I would agree. I would say I would say Ed, Edge's return to the Rumble would be a little bit better just because of the pure shocking off actor. But yeah. well, that's true. Based yeah. off of based yeah. off of what they couldn't do at WrestleMania, that was Edge basically is, a WrestleMania. Edge equals Met. good entrances is what we're trying to say. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But the whole but yeah, the brood I, and the gear and the red, oh, and he had to go to that dark place to beat Rollins because he tried to murder him before. Like it was just it was perfect. The whole match had perfect storytelling. They were, we, they were so worried about that that they ruined half the car. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> like, Drew and, Drew and Jinder could have been fantastic. You squashed that in five minutes. Argue there, wasn't any, there wasn't anything that Jinder kind of brought in to make it fantastic either, though. He didn't help the case. Can we stop having the large Scottish man swing an actual sword around? Like, come on. Yeah. Dude, you don't, you don't think be, you don't want a shanky on a stick? <laughs> or a beer on a bowl <laughs> um, but no I mean I thought <laughs> SummerSlam I thought was a, overall better but there were just so many more lows in SummerSlam than there were at TakeOver and that's also yep. so you have to add into the 10 matches compared to the 5 that TakeOver has can I ask Can I ask real quick how did you guys felt about the the match between well not the match between Lashley and Goldberg, but Ugh. the way that that match finished and overstepping to beat the living crap out of the sun, like kids, the kids more slanky than I am. Like, dude, that kid's fifteen too. Like the entire audience was cheering a fifteen year old getting a in a full Nelson lock, which just shows you how much they hate Goldberg. Dude, just the few the the timing for Goldberg for that match was so bad again. It shouldn't, like, it shouldn't have been the second to last match at there all. Was, I think not, no, a hundred percent. Way earlier in the card, get it out yeah. of the way, get your stupid fucking dud out of here. And you had to break it up because you didn't want to do two smackdown matches down the show, I guess. But the the spot on the top rope when Goldberg threw Lashley, I don't know who miscounted that or because Lashley rotated real late. And that's one of those things where you could have easily broken a neck, separated a shoulder, yeah, etc. MVP hits Goldberg with his cane on the outside. Dude doesn't react to it for like three seconds, four seconds. And his the timing was just horrific. I will like say, I will say though, for somebody who's as dominant as Bobby Lashley, mm-hmm. I, I almost feel like the hit with the cane on, on Goldberg's knee was just beyond unnecessary. I I I, I will say I was surprised that Goldberg was even putting that good of a performance after 45 seconds. I was waiting for him to get winded at 15. Yeah. I'm not it, I'm not solely based off the fact that it's Vince. And Goldberg's like, I'm coming back, but like, you got to save my ego and my character because that's all Goldberg cares about now. You think so, though? Considering that what yeah, he said, no, what I do. He said on you know the why? last, considering I what he said two, on the last I raw, give, though? I could give two SHITs about what he said on the last raw. You know why? Because he's <laughs> the guy that, that took the fucking title off the fiend when he was right hot. Because, oh, I'm a hero to the kids. I beat the fiend. The fiend wasn't a bad guy, he was just fucking over as hell. So fuck Goldberg, <laughs> fuck him. He can go to heck. I don't want to see his ugly face just, until I have to look at him at Crown stop. Jewel. At Crown Jewel, because that's the next time he's going to be fighting, and then I don't want to see him again. Sick and tired of his his, he his two stop. match contract. He needs to stop it. being in pro like high profile matches. It's just Sick of it. it's clear he doesn't have it anymore, and his aura is for at least for me is just fucking gone. Listen, if you want Goldberg to fight, you know who you get Goldberg to fight. <laughs> Dolph Ziggler every time. Dominic no. Mysterio. No, if sure. Goldberg's if Goldberg's <laughs> going to fight someone, do it at WrestleMania. Give me a five minute joke match of Goldberg versus Gilbert, and I'm set for life. I don't even see that ugly <laughs> fuck ever again. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. I'd Where's rather, my dream match with Goldberg and Gilbert? I'd rather have a triple threat with Goldberg, Gilbert, and Ryback, and have three stages of Goldberg. <laughs> sick of it, man. I, I'm I'm just sick of. Him just three getting hell world world title shot after world title shot, and he's never around. I'm sick of it. 
Yep. He's not he's not the box office name, Vince. John Cena, Edge, those are the names that need to be in these matches. Brock Lesnar, those are the part-timers that you bring into these matches. I'll even take the Undertaker's old ass. No, stop it. No, leave no, him, stop leave him out of over, here. Way over too many Goldberg. Way too many medical nope. issues. Way yep. too many over medical Goldberg. issues. I want Undertaker yes. to go enjoy his days. Tell I want him to as well. But if if I'm sitting there. And I have to choose between seeing Undertaker on television or Goldberg on television. I'm taking Undertaker a hundred times out of a hundred. If I had to choose, yeah, sure. Yeah. If I so, had to choose in this, and this was five years ago, yeah, Undertaker is the easy choice by far. And I'm a Goldberg I'll take fan. Take bald HBK over that motherfucker any day of the week. Give me that listen, bald guy. Listen, I'll, I'll take. Fuck it. King, I'll bring, take bring in King Barrett. Of, Just bring in King Barrett at this point. Of Jerry Lawler all over him. He's still alive, dude. Yeah, he's a ghost. <laughs> I'll he's actually take Kevin he Nash a... and his torn quads over Goldberg. Dude, I, I saw, was I, saw I was surprised graphic. that Lawler was still awake past ten. There was a graphic I saw that he's in a match this weekend. It's like a casket match between him and like I gotta find it out. It was pretty fucking funny. Hold on, carry on, Jer- Jerry Lawler. Yeah, he's, he's still, still wrestling, wrestling, dude. Yeah, one wow. thing, one thing that we definitely need to act, uh, need to add up here as well to SummerSlam, is the amount of fuck ups technically by the crew operating the show. We oh, saw, listen. we saw. Hang on, we saw no uh, pyrotechnics. The um, so the arena allegedly banned it. They didn't want the pyro for some reason. Don't know why, but I agree. It's just part of the show. It's kind of what brings the crowd to get even more fired up as part of entrances and not yep, seeing that like like, uh, you, like you're gonna tell me that the edge entrance wouldn't have been on a wonderful note finished with the fireworks behind him i think he did the, the two 100 100 but you know it's allegiance stadium what do you say and, but the, also, I and think... the graphics were all over the place oh. the graphics <laughs> can, I tell you, can, I, can i tell you guys the thing so this yes. weekend in an independent show, they're doing Jerry Lawler versus Enzo Amore in a casket match. Oh, Enzo Amore still loses. <laughs> what a strange All right, whatever. You know what? At this point, you know what? Just bring on Kennedy. Just bring bring on Kennedy or the sergeant. That's it. You yeah, want that's someone it. to kill a man's career. You bring on Ken Kennedy. Facts. He almost killed Randy Orton. He'll tear John Cena's pec. He'll dislocate Randy Orton's shoulder any day of the week. They have the best potatoes and squash you'll ever feel in your life. All right. (laughs) So real quick, last topic that I want to discuss before we end tonight's whatever you want to call this episode. It was supposed to be like a SummerSlam takeover recap, and then we just got we just started listing names that we wanted over fucking Goldberg. <laughs> I'm still mad. <laughs> like, listen, don't get me wrong. I would rather Carlito and Primo in a two-on-one handicap match. I'd rather step on the Legos anything. for a week than watch Goldberg versus Bobby Lashley again. A week straight. Just bring Bad Bunny back. Yeah, he was Bad Bunny, Bunny Mama. All right. <clears throat> Last thing. Extreme Rules is five weeks away. I wrote an article earlier about prediction, predicting the card. Oh, here comes the plug. Oh, what a here selfless plug. plug. Selfless yep. plug. What yep. a, well, wow. see, well, you not let me fucking finish. Well, you keep, you're keep doing like this. I don't know if you're going to talk. Yeah, because you're fucking <laughs> interrupting me. I, that was usual. before I even, that's, that's before I even started interrupting nope. you. <laughs> He had nope. that he had that turtle shell at the ready before he even said article. So, it was like the word article was already in, in between splosion <laughs> and everything else. Happened. He was like article, uh, yeah. Uh, article. <laughs> go ahead, Daddy. Are you frozen? So the article that I wrote <laughs> extreme rules predicting, predicting the cards. Give me your thoughts on what you think the card could look like. Was this article on the internet? Yeah. Use the internet so, one more. Use the internet one time. To I haven't used the internet once com. today, so I didn't see it. <laughs> no, but I like your. I know you say it's kind of catering, but I would love to see Keith Lee step in to be the next challenger for the WWE Championship, even if it's a one-off, just to reestablish him, get him some wins on Raw. Even if he loses to Lashley again, like he did a couple weeks ago when he came back, would love to see it. Just because we're all big Keith Lee fans in this house and podcast. So, so I think more so. I want. I want to. So, can we all agree that Bobby Goldberg is not going to happen in Extreme Rules? 
Ah, uh, yeah, it's definitely looking like a Saudi show because they're gonna sell the knee injury. Uh-huh. For like we can month. agree all we want, but WWE will still make it happen. Well, we're no, gonna book I'm them talking, once a week listen, for the next year. Listen, 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 listen. I'm talking about us, us three agreeing on something. Yeah. I know it doesn't happen often. I've I've agreed with you guys about the whole Goldberg coming back thing. I just the only the my my defense for Goldberg was plain and simple. Keith Lee was under a, a heavy ring rust that he just wasn't ready. It's unfortunate. It sucks. Okay. So I think he deserves the opportunity. Yeah, but what what other like potential rivalries are you keen on potentially seeing? Well, I like, still th- throw I some, like, throw some out there. I still liked your idea on Priest and AJ just to get AJ back into singles matches. I don't necessarily see AJ winning because you want to give Priest more wins, obviously. Uh, and I just. We'll see. I just, I really don't know what they're going to do for the WWE title. It sounds like it's going to be like a quick, uh, just one month off thing. I don't know who it could be. Maybe Ricochet gets a freaking chance. It could be anybody. Like uh, even so, SmackDown is going to be Finn, you know? So for me, for me personally, there's one match that it's a low key match and shouldn't really represent much. Um, but I just don't see it happening. The prediction of King Nakamura versus Sami Zayn. Um, we've known that Zane has been off screen for a little bit now, um, with the fears of more WWE releases about to happen. I think he's one of the big names potentially being released. Um, with that said, I think I would like a change of pace here and seeing that Nakamura is one of those like fast wrestlers with a lot of, uh, stamina and whatnot. I would love to see him go head to head against somebody like, you know, like Ricochet, like, um, like Hunneman mentioned i think i think a push for ricochet right now would be ideal uh seeing that he's been in the in the weeds of the product and he's got a lot of potential he's a young talent uh, deserves the opportunity um and i think in, i think there was another match that i that i wanted to point out I like your triple threat idea too for the SmackDown women's. If, if Sasha is able just, to compete, it just I, I love that more, idea. Think of, think of it like this though: it's five weeks out. You, th- you think they've known about this for over a week now, so you got to think that she's out of quarantine and potentially done within the next week or two. If it was COVID, let's not jump to conclusions. All signs point to it, but yes, she's an anti-vaxxer and she's missed the show. I know, I, I know, I know. Believe that it's from COVID nineteen. I know, I know. Yeah. Um. But it just it, it just makes too much sense. Yeah. Because that way, quote unquote, if Becky loses, she Bianca could God. pin Bianca that would make could, me even more mad. Bianca could pin <laughs> Sasha and set up Bianca versus fucking Becky at Survivor Series or cool. Saudi or whatever the fuck else they want to do. Not Saudi. Just fuck that show. <laughs> and uh, they can't even really have women wrestle in the Saudi show yet because they're strict about their laws and things like that. Yep. Um all I right. think there's I think there's another flip that I would personally call for. Um, I love you, Karen Cross versus Drew McIntyre idea. It's a great idea. However, seeing how much Cross has been pushed, I think personally I will probably flip it a little bit. Go Karen Cross. Um, Karen Cross versus. Um, oh my God! Why can't I think of his name? Blue Meanie. <laughs> No, versus Dewdrop. Um, <laughs> yeah, that'd be a pretty good match, probably. No, Dewdrop's I would like. Great. I would like to. I would like to see Karen Cross versus uh, Finn Balor, and I would like to see Keith Lee, um, Keith Lee battle against Roman Reigns. I know it can't happen, but that's one oh, that I would love to see. It. Fuck it, have them make a trade. Just do it. <laughs> the draft, <laughs> is, the draft is in like Keith, a month. Doesn't fucking Keith matter. Lee, Just make a trade now. We'll trade Keith Lee for. The fucking fist that SmackDown used to have. <laughs> I mean, I mean, honestly, with what they did to Bianca Belair, it almost sounds like okay, the big roster change up is happening, and so we're gonna get these people into SmackDown, these people into Raw, and it's happening a lot sooner than we predicted. So that'd be huge. NXT oh. changes coming as early I as this think, week. So too. to go back on on your um, take about Cross and Drew McIntyre, yeah. The only reason I had it is because they're gonna have Drew on the card regardless. He already faced Jinder. He squashed him. What's yeah. next? No, I, I I love the match. I'm I'm not opposed to it. I I think the match is awesome. Um, uh, it's one that will actually push Karen Cross to show what he's actually got to deserve the main roster. <laughs> See, here's here's my here's my biggest fear about that match. 
Karen Cross beats Drew McIntyre. Possibly, yeah. Very possible. Well, if you want to establish him and actually give him a chance to, you know, succeed, just, just bring Scarlett back. Please, just do it. He sucks. I hate, I, I hate him so much. He's, he's so, so bad. bad. I just but, don't get it. I don't fucking get it. So right. I think the, the universal title is the biggest what if. Because obviously Roman versus Brock in, in an Extreme Rules match must watch TV. But again, the Saudi show is happening. <laughs> you have to think about that. That's why I think they save it and they have their quote-unquote SummerSlam S card in Saudi Arabia minus the women because of their SummerSlam laws. Backlash Extreme Rules Edition. I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> 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 I will. I'll kill you right on the podcast. Okay. I'll kill you off like Vince McMahon killed off Keith Lee. <laughs> Carry on. Um, but no, I think I think we're we have some potential here. Um, I'm waiting to see what the call ups look like as well. Obviously, you know, those are a big. Uh, what if? Yeah. But I'm mm-hmm. assuming we're getting Karen Cross on that Monday Night Raw. Would love to see him just go after Drew and just create this weird feud because God forbid Drew McIntyre can't be in the world title picture because Bobby Lashley still has it around his waist. Meanwhile, uh, Bobby imagine- Lashley. Meanwhile, Bobby Lashley is furious because of the fact of the one match he wants he can't have because Brock Lesnar works on Fridays now. Yep. I'm sorry, every other Friday now. Every third. <laughs> you know what, though? Excuse me. <laughs> you know what, though? It's it's actually such a nice mental healing from see that happening. Just especially after what he did to Goldberg sign. I'm just like, fuck you. You deserve to wait. Fuck you. Yeah. I like him and all, but I'm like, the kid's 15. He hasn't even weighed 100 pounds. Like, Dude, cheers oh, to the kid for taking the bump. You know, Leave him alone. He didn't know it was his kid. Didn't you hear MVP? You think MVP lies about people? It MVP, wasn't I, MVP's right, piece of scumbag. I did like the extension of the feud the way they did that. So obviously Goldberg couldn't compete, and then Lashley got attacked from behind by it could have been anybody, as MVP said. Turns out it was Goldberg's son. So there's a little more heat in the rivalry. Not that I want to see him lock it up again, but it was a different way to keep it going. So I don't hate it. I, I, I just think hate that, everything about it. I think <laughs> that the beating with the chairs was more than enough. Mm. Oh, yeah. that insult to injury, will you? One put the time. through a table. You know, just One put the time. through a table. All yeah. right. We're getting off topic. All right, last thing. Does Big E cash in tonight? No. No. Right. No. I would love for him to. Don't think it happens. August 23rd, 2021. Does Big E cash in his money bank contract tonight? No. No. Okay. A lot of people I'm were the, thinking that was going to happen, but I think Goldberg is going to be away for a while. I'm going to sign. I'm going to sign the no train. Um, and by the way, this is going to be a question that we ask every single week from now on when we record. <laughs> and then we're going to get it right at some point, but we'll see. To, well, we're going to get it right tonight because we're oh, we're going to be one for one. On, does he cash in? <laughs> no. I'm thinking, I'm thinking Big E cashes at Extreme Rules. That's where I think he does. Well, I can't believe he cashed in on the Rob Pre show. What a, what a wild day. So before I before I kill my my co-host here, we're gonna sign off um, from the ghost of Christmas past, Diego Galvis, um, from wow. the Walking Dead, from the Walking Dead himself, Andrew Hunneman. And what's your uh, excuse? From the ugly ginger fat bass, Chris Jones. Sign off. We'll see you guys next week for episode twenty-four. Hopefully, we have. Bye. More fun, cool things to talk about. Bye. And we stay on topic for longer than a minute. Also, shout Bye. out to Couch Guy Sports. Make sure you're using it tonight one time again. Shout out to our friends at Exogun, exogun.com. It's at checkout, CGS10 for 10% off. That's CGS, that's C as in G- Chris, G as in Galvis, S as in stupid, meaning Hahnemann, 10, 10% off at checkout. Don't forget it. Use the internet. Go check out Couch Guy Sports to the Moon. Good night. Uh.